Last week at the board, Martin Evans came and talked about the progress that we are making towards producing six area statements for the land-based places in Wales and an area statement for marine by March of next year. This is a commitment that is in the Environment Act 2016 and alongside SONA, is, it's one of two main outputs for NRW. Area statements I have found fascinating ever since I started and asked that really obvious question of, so what are they? What are they going to look like? And of course now I know much more about them I realised that that was the wrong question to be asking because they will be the product of conversations, discussions, meetings, analysis that has taken place now over nearly a two year period and will go on. These will be living documents. They don't just stop in March of next year. That's the moment when they need to come together, but they will go on developing, evolving, improving, changing the way we and others work. If you're a member of staff and you've not been very close to area statements and think it's all a bit complicated and really difficult to understand, let's try and bust the myth. Put at its simplest sense, for me, area statements, and I'm very much like this, I don't like things to be too complicated. At its simplest, it is about if we have this conversation in this way, with these people, about these things, in this place, with the emphasis on place, as being as a place-based organisation, then we can achieve these things together in a joined up way. Now that might sound too simple, but it, it, at its essence, that's what area statements, the process is about. And if we can follow that process through, I think we can achieve some great things. An A to Z start to finish of area statements. Firstly, it's around preparations before we start talking to people and listening. When we do that listening and the engagement with stakeholders old and new, there will be issues that come out from it, uh, ideas and opportunities. Those will lead to priorities. Not everything is, can be a priority, so we have to get some agreement about what's important. Thereafter, what interventions are needed to address those very important things, the top priorities, and there are, whose role is it to undertake those interventions or actions? And hopefully, if we can get those done uh, by working jointly, we can get the outcomes, those multiple outcomes and benefits that we hope that um, the Environment Act and Wellbeing Act are intended to deliver. Just something about where area statements fit in, in, in the world of uh, natural resource planning in Wales. The 2016 Environment Act, when it mentioned area statements, there was a statutory deliberate intent there that area statements would be developed not as plans or programmes in themselves, but there to frame the plans and programmes of others and that they would, they would inform and drive the priorities and actions of others as well as ourselves. So it's really important to just state that really, that that's, it's not, they're not plans or programmes in themselves, but they are seriously intended to drive and inform the work and plans and programmes of others. I find them fascinating for two reasons. One, that they will bring together in one place information and priorities for that place. But I also think they are fascinating because of the way they are being produced and used and the way in which we as an organisation have had to work and behave differently in order to get the engagement and buy-in from partners and stakeholders. Because these aren't something that NRW can produce on its own. We have a lot of information, but it is only when that information is combined with and overlaid with the information and views of others that you get that richness 
that will create statements that are authentic and real and valued by a wide range of individuals and organisations. And so we are sort of approaching the end of the beginning phase for area statements. We're getting to that point where we have something that we can share more widely and start using. But in my view, these will become fundamental to the way we and others work. I've had the benefit of uh, sitting in on a lot of the discussions and dialogue at area statements, the workshops and uh, local events, and there's been some brilliant things coming out of it. One is that um, there's a real issue around capacity, and again, that's not a surprise to anybody who works in NRW. Capacity is an issue outside uh, of NRW, so I think area statements can really help um, make the best of that existing capacity by pulling it all together. I think another point that's come through is that there's really high energy and some great um, ideas and opportunities out there, but they're they tend to be uncoordinated and again I'd hope that area statements can act as a binding agent to bring all these things together so that there's an agreement about what's important. We've also been, and this is intriguing, um, talking to some um, organisations that we regulate and they say they're fine about being regulated but they also want to work with us in partnership proactively, not just be regulated. And there's a real challenge for NRW there whether we can work on those two fronts with them and yet keep those roles separated. Uh, as a regulator because we really want to work with these and you can see the enthusiasm coming from them about wanting to work with us in partnership too. Um, there's, this is really satisfying. Another point that's come through is that there's some real strong endorsement that our, the evidence base and the emerging themes that we've indicated are the right kind of things at place have been strongly endorsed by everybody around those tables. One of the things that, that has been really interesting um, as we've gone through this process has been the fact that we've had the Wales Audit Office alongside us over the last few months looking at how we're working, how we're working with others to produce area statements. Um, and their report has been extremely helpful and positive. Again, they are looking very much at the process that we've used, the engagement that we've had, the different ways in which we've engaged with partners, communities, individuals. And I think that this is something that, that we will be building on and building on their recommendations. Um, so I think that has been an interesting aspect of this work, having a sort of audit as you develop um, a process rather than just at the end. I think it's also interesting in that respect that actually we're getting quite a lot of inquiries from England and Scotland about the whole process and we'll see but I think it might be that England find that something similar goes in any new environment bill. So leading the way in Wales as is often the case um, breaking new ground, both in terms of what we're producing, but also the way that we are working with others to create area statements. You might have heard from Claire in a previous clip that uh, she's pretty excited about th this work around area statements. For me, I, I'm probably more so, because this is NRW being required by a, a statutory piece of legislation to undertake a national conversation with the people of Wales about natural resource management. It's terrific. So this is NRW making the weather. This is a piece of work we've never done before. So there's no right or wrong way to go about it. And that's been probably the most exciting thing about it because there's no marking us wrongly on this. It's been a huge learning process and I'm really hopeful that we can actually use it to its fullest intent, which is to bring people together and agree on what's important so we can get things done that can have multiple benefits and broad um, 
yeah, just positive things happening in Wales around the management of our natural resources for the benefit of people, uh, natural resources in their own right, the economy and Wales PLC if you can put it like that.